I'm at the sanctuary of Aphrodite at Kuklia, we're about 10 kilometers out of Pathos and uh, I've just had a bit of a practice with my somewhat broken Greek with the, uh, the guy on reception and then <laughs> I fell foul of my usual usual language barrier where I can say a certain phrase pretty well in Greek and then of course they think that you are fluent and they say something back to you really fast and you've got no idea what they're talking about. I should maybe just stick to the English or, or the Yorkshire, you know, that's what I'm best at. But anyway, I'm here and uh, I had a really interesting conversation with him because he asked what I do for a living and I said I worked with computers. And I think he took that to mean that I, I could actually predict the lottery numbers in Cyprus, which sadly I, I can't because I wouldn't be I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I could. But in Cyprus, apparently it's seven million euros the prize. So there you go. Wow, that's quite a lot. Anyway, enough of my uh, banter with the uh, guy on reception. So here we are. Uh, we've got some ruined temples to my left. In fact, I'll work my way around this wall and show you some of the mosaics because the mosaics are the main thing here really and the main thing that's left you can see the kind of foundations of the temple walls uh, but there's not a great deal there there is quite a bit in the museum further on which you can see in the distance uh, which i'll take you to in a, in a moment uh, but yeah, this is the, I believe, the oldest recorded site of the goddess Aphrodite in the world. So this is actually mentioned in Homer. Uh, and of course, nobody knows exactly when Homer was writing. But, you know, current thinking is possibly around, around about anywhere between 800 BC to maybe... 1200 BC but this site predates Homer so you know the, we're talking you know something along the lines of over three and a half thousand years old so that is that is really really old uh, so let's have a closer look at some of the mosaics and as you can imagine they're very weathered uh, they're incomplete so a lot of the tesserae the small stones that make up the mosaics have been lost to time uh, but you get a sense of some of the geometric patterns that they, they very cleverly made. First sanctuary comprised of a shrine with a surrounding wall of cyclopean dimensions. Look at these stones. It's nice to imagine that huge one-eyed cyclops hefted these around and used them to build this, this structure. Whether they did or not, who knows? Get, get a really nice view of the Mediterranean. The most famous mosaic, which is over that way, we will get to it. So leader and the swan. Okay, so we're in the courtyard of the museum area, which is over there. They do do concerts downstairs in that, you can just see that uh, arched area in front. Uh, and it's a really kind of uh, acoustically sound hallway with these kind of like arched ceilings. It's really impressive. I've never been to a music thing there. So I've just been what we've got here is a TV room. Nobody's in it, so that's great. I can keep talking. But basically, they've got this... Uh, we'll just zoom in this... This video about the history of Aphrodite and the site on loop. It's about 15 minutes long, I think, something like that. It's well worth watching. That is the mosaic that I mentioned, Leader and the Swan. So that's Zeus, who shape-changed into a swan to uh, have his wicked way with Leda. Stones and other items from the sanctuary were used as building material for the manor house. After the conquest of 
conquest of Cyprus by the Ottomans in 1571, the manor house was reconstructed and served as the residence of the Turkish commander of Paphos, who had his headquarters at Kuklia. Today, the building houses the local museum. We'll go over to that in a second. The ground floor gallery contains exhibits from the sanctuary. So that's the, uh, the sacred stone that I mentioned, the Baikal. Thought to be the cult symbol of Aphrodite in the sanctuary of Paleopathos, that's ancient Pathos. Ephetomy, daughter of Agapenor. Agapenor was one of the old kings of Cyprus, the daughter of Agaratis to the Pathian Aphrodite. I'm not sure. Oh, it, say, it says middle second century BC. All right. Actually, I can translate a little bit of this for you because there you've got an A, P, H, R, O. You're guessing what this is going to be? D, I, T, E. So there you've got Aphrodite. Uh, and that bit there is A, G, A. So that'll be, uh, I'm guessing, Agapenor. Interesting. There's no, uh, no mention of the lottery numbers on there, though. That's a shame, isn't it? God, that's huge. Clay storage jar. I wonder what they stored in that. And here we've got a humble bath, a clay bath. Doesn't look very big, does it? I just mentioned the hallway that I was talking about earlier, which is through this archway, which apparently is one of the finest examples of Gothic architecture on the whole island. I wonder if we can just move down and have a quick peek. Some more columns there. Just a quick nose. So much cooler. Looks like they're getting ready for a concert. I mean, look at that, look at that ceiling. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like they're getting ready for some kind of concert. So I can just make out a stage. But the light looks magical coming out of that window. Look at that view, so peaceful. 